so I might have to, yeah, I might have to do just just the recording of the um, third session. I mean, the first session yesterday. Hey, morning, Jackin. Morning, everyone. Okay, so let's um, <clears throat> let's get started. Um, just want to read from um, okay, one Corinthians chapter two. Um, but before that, I just wanted to. Uh, I just want to say that, you know, um, just because we are in Bible college second year or going to third year, <laughs> that does not mean that, um, you know, like we were talking today, that we have a full picture or we have, okay, this is what God wants me to do, you know, kind of um, revelation or understanding. Uh, that does not mean that you need to have, you know, or it's already there. Now, some of us might have received, okay, very clear. This is what God wants me to do. I'm very clear. I'm very focused. I'm going after it. But there could be someone, you know, saying that, you know, I'm I'm in the second year. I'm going to be in the third year. And even now, uh, you know, I'm, uh, people ask me, okay, after Bible college, what? And I, I'm not sure, right? So uh, I'm just I just want to share this scripture, you know, First um, Corinthians chapter two, and verse nine. Okay, it says, but as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Okay, so it talks about natural or physical senses. I, you know, not seeing, ear, not heard. And it also talks about, you know, nor have entered into the heart of man, right? The spirit of man, you know, what God has prepared. But, you know, that's not the end of the story. The next verse, verse 10, it says, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, the deep things of God. Okay, So, so God has a plan. We know God has a purpose for each one of us and it's unique. Uh, we don't need to compare. It's something unique and he has fashioned us uniquely. So God has a plan. God has a purpose, right? So this scripture talks about how the Holy Spirit reveals them to us. So even though you know it is not, it's not physically seen. Even though we've not heard about it, even though it has not entered into our heart yet, right? But God will reveal. Right? God has revealed them to us. How does He do it? Do it by the Holy Spirit, right? Either a quickened word or a sovereign, you know, manner. Uh, but God will reveal this and the revelation. Of course, um, can be a dramatic encounter, but can be a gradual, uh, progressive uh, revelation, right? Understanding or knowing that, okay, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. But uh, the thing is this, to pursue him, to seek him, to be faithful in what, in the present, you know, whatever he is, and responsibility that he's entrusted to be to be faithful and um, uh, to be willing and to serve him in all those things, and we will see that there is a knowing, there is a you know there is an increased, progressive, gradual knowing about what we are supposed to be doing. Right, so we don't have to be worried or anxious, saying, "Okay, you know, I've not yet, I've not yet got it. I thought it will happen." Right. Um, but it's a walk with God. So, um, you know, it's a journey with, with the Lord, right? So I just want to share that. So 1 Corinthians 2, verses 9 and 10. Okay, let's pray. Father, we, we just want to thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you that um, not even though our eyes may not have seen, even though our ears may not have heard, Lord, nor, Lord, we may not have even uh, perceived in our hearts, God, the things that you prepared for us. But Lord, your intention is that you would reveal these to us, Lord. And your desire is that you would reveal all of these to us uh, through your spirit, Lord, in our hearts, God. And so uh, we want to position ourselves, Lord. We want to place ourselves in that, um, Lord, in that um, manner to receive from you, God. We want to place ourselves in that manner, Lord, to be, to be hungry for you. Uh, for your word, for the works of your spirit, Lord. And we want to be sensitive, Lord, to the leading of your Holy Spirit, Master. And I just pray for those who are not in that place yet, saying, you know, I don't know. Uh, I just, things are not clear yet. Lord, I just pray especially for those um, uh, those of us who are in that place. I pray, Lord, that 
let there be a progressive, increasing, Lord, uh, an understanding and a sense of knowing of what uh, you've called us for, Master. And I just pray that there will be much joy because your word says that, uh, Lord, that you will lead us into a discovery, to discover the good works that you have already prepared beforehand for us, Lord, to discover it and to and to carry them out, Lord, joyfully. We thank you, Lord. We we commit ourselves into your mighty hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so, so the, the other words that we can look at is you know, Ephesians 2, and um, <clears throat> Ephesians 2.10, right? For it says, we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So his the the reason he prepared is that we should walk in them. So it means he's already prepared that right in Christ Jesus. Okay. Um, right. Okay. I'm just sharing the notes, and we are in um, page eight, uh, defining vision. Okay. So I think this morning um, during the mentoring hour, we looked at that whole cycle of, you know, vision to implementation, vision to execution, right? <clears throat> so uh, a vision, it uh, uh, simply put, <clears throat> it is a description, a vision statement, if you want to say, it is a description or a statement which describes, you know, who we want to be, who we will be. You know, it could be a church ministry, uh, it could even be a you know, could have a vision as a person. You know, this is who I would I want to be, um, right? So, so that is simply put. That's a vision. So, <clears throat> when we look at a vision statement, it uh, it shares the purpose. Okay, the purpose for which we are doing what we are doing. Okay, uh, why are we here? Right. This is the purpose. It also shares about you know. Uh, it, it has its focus on the future. It's not about today. It's not about the here and now, but it's about the future. You know, this is who we want to be is not right now, but this is, you know, it's going to take time. It's in the future. And it is also a call to action, which means that it's it reminds us, okay, this is who we want to be. So we better better we better start moving in that direction, right? It's a call to action, okay? So uh, when we look at the uh, vision statement uh, or, a, you know, or a vision uh, which has this purpose and future in mind and a call to action, now we, we, we can consider three important questions, okay? Um, three questions. You, you want to rest or something? You want to rest? Uh, uncomfortable? Or have some hot water? Yeah, I think. Yes. <clears throat> um, okay, so the uh, three important questions, like, okay, what, or what do we want to do? Okay, now that's going to describe our vision. Okay, like for example, if you take, um, if you take the vision of, um, like what we looked at, no, or vision of all people's church, the ministry of all people's church. Let's just take that. I want to put it on the chat. Um, Okay, so so that's the vision. So <clears throat> if you consider the question, what? Okay, so it describes the vision, and it also what is it that we want to do? Okay, so it says that um, the vision is to be salt and light, to be a voice, and uh, and so on, right? To be a voice to the nation, it's to be to the nations, and so on, and. Another question that we can consider is why. <clears throat> okay, so why do we want to do this? That describes our mission statement. Okay, so is there a difference between a vision and a mission? Yes. So vision talks about okay where or uh, who we want to be or uh, how, where we want to go or what do we want to become. But a mission statement, um, if we have one, would talk about what we want to do. Okay, so it talks about salt and light. In the city of Bangalore, voice to the nation and now and to the nations. Um, you know, so a mission statement would be, okay, we want to equip believers, right? We want to reach out to people. We want to equip believers in the word and the spirit. Uh, we want to raise up uh, maybe people of God uh, who can be influencers and so on. You know, it can it can be something like that, or it could also 
be a little more focused it could talk about okay we want to plant churches we want pl plant so many churches in the city and plant so many churches in the nation <coughs> excuse me and also um you know okay maybe you know have this bible college and uh, you know equipping people in the, the word and the spirit so that they can further go and so it can be you know things like that why we do we want to do it okay and and how the question how would be very specific it it would describe the goals you know goals are short term it could be long term but it's very specific objectives now these are the activities these are the steps that we are going to take in order to reach that vision okay in order to reach that or uh, fulfill that vision right okay so um so we know that vision is a is a, is a big picture and it's it's good that we you know think about this consider this and also you know if the lord leads you or any of us to maybe plant a church start something um it's good to have that big picture you know why am i doing this right uh, god put this in my heart but you know to to just make sense of it and say why am i doing this and of course the lord will add to it and further expand the scope of the vision uh, maybe but it's good for us for us to think and uh, maybe even write down and say okay this is the vision that god has given okay so let's look at some characteristics uh, when we talk about the vision okay and or the uh, attributes of a vision what it will accomplish okay it's very important right so a clear vision from god provides direction and guidance okay so it's it gives direction which means that uh, when we say direction uh, it's not south east west right it points to a certain uh place it points to a certain objective okay it it is providing direction okay so um i'm sure that if um, you know if you want to go from here to any any place you can think of you know let's say you want to go from here to nandi hills right so you will look for direction okay now it's become so easy we just put in the name uh, punch in the type in in the, in the google maps and then you click on directions and it will give you okay this is the route okay so a vision is like that it gives us direction okay so without direction it's very difficult to reach an objective or reach a place right so vision provides a direction and uh, a clear vision from god gives us the direction and not only the direction but also the guidance okay so which means that we will not deviate right so suppose i need to go right and i go left right so it's going to result in loss of time i'm not going to end up you know suppose i you know in 30 minutes uh, i uh, the, the map says in 30 minutes i will reach right? if i take a left and go the map says right i take a left i'm not going to reach that place in 30 minutes it, it, it might take me uh, more than 30 minutes more than and maybe hour maybe because there are i've taken a wrong direction so so the thing is that a vision gives us guidance so that there is no deviation there is no delay right um there is no unnecessary trouble you know I, have you um you know when you're following the google map have you taken a wrong turn right so yeah many times you know we, because we we thank god now they put that white you know that arrow when you want to turn uh initially it was not there so you think okay maybe it's the next road but you, you after you cross you realize oh and you can't come back it's maybe a one way whatever and it's just reroutes you uh and uh, and and then you realize that hey, it's going to take a while right it's going to uh, take take me further away it's going to take me there's going to be some delay okay it's a very frustrating experience right but when there is vision when there is a clear vision clarity there's clarity of purpose and everything but also you know direction and guidance and everything right? so proverbs 29 18 talks about that where there is no revelation the people cast off restraint right but happy is he who keeps the law so if there is no revelation meaning there is no clear sense of purpose there's no clear sense of direction then what happens is 
the the action that follows is also not clear right the action that follows is not also not clear because you are in two minds am i doing the right thing or am i not right so whatever you know decisions we are making that is also not clear and and therefore you know uh, over a period of time we realize that you know we are not going anywhere right we are not reaching any place right? so uh, a clear vision from god is so so precious and this verse talks about that if there is no revelation the people cast off restraint you know, in, the, in the sense that people are not guided people cast off any kind of restraint you know the, the uh, you know a vision in a way is restraining right in a in a re restraint what does restraint mean it holds you back right it holds you back from wrong decisions it holds you back from just doing anything and everything that you want to do it it restrains you it gives you a sense of focus so that our resources our time our energy is used in the right way right so uh, so that's what this verse says that um, people cast off restraint but happy is he who keeps the law okay uh, the second one is that a clear vision brings light okay matthew 6 22 23 the lord says the lamp of the body is the eye if therefore your eye is good your whole body will be full of light but if your eye is bad your whole body will be full of darkness if therefore the light that is in you is darkness how great is that darkness okay now of course um is not just talking about the physical eye here but um, you know i just want to talk about the physical eye you know if the physical eye um is is clear then we are able to there is you know there is clarity right and uh, i remember first time i wore the glass right uh, i thought i was seeing everything you know perfectly well and i was sitting at the back of the classroom and in, in school and uh, in college actually and i thought it was clear and then i started wearing the glass and suddenly oh wow the leaves are all well formed you know on the trees i thought it was one one mass of green but now i can see specific detail you know right you see it and then you and then you realize oh there is clarity right so the thing is this a vision brings light okay there is just like what a light does you know light and when you and it illuminates there's no darkness there is clarity you know you're able to see better because there is light right so a vision does that brings clarity okay and uh, and so the lord talks about that right just like a physical eye enables light to enter and gives a clear vision so so also when you have a vision statement it brings clarity you know it brings clarity to uh, maybe if it's a church that you're leading it brings clarity to the church where everybody is clear hey, this is where we are heading and this is why we are doing what we're doing okay so if that clarity is there in every person then there is there is a you know high chance of unity right oneness of mind so people are not pulling in different directions you know what people are not saying okay we need to be this we need to be that we need to be that also we need to be doing this right but this vision defines uh, and brings clarity right okay a vision is something that we need to state it needs to be stated meaning it needs to be you know uh, maybe written down maybe spoken out it needs to be stated so it should be clear it should be concise meaning it cannot be running into pages and pages or you know, then it needs to be you know in a, in two or three sentences you should be able to actually capture okay this is what um, the vision is right and it also you know because we as human beings we we uh, you know we are creative and we we are visual beings you know right so we think and then we think in terms of pictures and so on so uh, it it will all immediately create a picture in our minds right so um, you know this is what we see in habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 2 the lord answered and said write the vision make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it okay so which means that one who reads that vision he is moved to action Right, that he may run who reads it another version talks about the lord told me i will give you my message in the form of a vision write it clearly enough to be read at a glance okay so 
um, to stating that vision. So it's a very, um, it's a difficult thing, right? When you're writing down maybe for your ministry uh, or maybe God has called you to do something and to, to write in two or three sentences, what is that? What is that big thing? Or, or what are all those things that God has called you to do? Right? To write it down, it's it's a uh, it's a task. Right? It's a difficult task, but uh, uh, but that's something that you can do. Okay. So um, so why don't you take some time, maybe a minute, to write down okay, what is the vision of my life? <laughs> I know it, it needs a lot of time, right? But you know, what is my life? Why am I here? Right? So now you know, now you're a believer. Your, your, uh, you know, you've been kind of um, hearing the voice of God and learning the word of God. So, why don't you write down? You know, what is my vision in life? Okay, just uh, maybe a couple of sentences. Yeah, let's let's try an attempt to do that. Okay. You write it down first. <laughs> God only knows the end from the beginning, right? <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> write it. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, time starts now. Um, those who are in online class also, you know, just try and write down, capture uh, in a sentence or a couple of sentences. What is it? Um, what is the vision of my life? <clears throat> Sorry, uh, you're putting yourself as a you know as a third person. The vision of so and so is you put your name there. The vision of Prince is to do or to be or you know, things like that.
Okay. So, any brave ones in the class? <laughs> so you can you can just share what you started writing, and then um, you know I'm sure it you know I, I don't think it'll be complete in in a few minutes, but if you have, I mean that's great. Like for example, I this is what I wrote. Okay, I wrote that vision of Jake Marisa is, is to draw people to an encounter with Jesus through worship, and to ground them in the Word and the works of the Spirit. Okay. So now I know that's that's just one aspect of me, you know. Uh, it doesn't talk anything about me as a father, as a husband, and you know, it doesn't cover anything or even the, you know, the call of God, whatever. But the, I, I just felt this, so I just wrote that down. So anyone else you want to share? Uh, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. <clears throat> you use the mic. Uh, it's there, sir. Yeah. I wrote through. here, mm -hmm. my vision is to become a pastor and to serve the God and to people and to save the souls, those who don't know Jesus Christ. Right. I want to bring those in, in his kingdom. Very good. Yeah. Vision of my life is to be a way for the prodigal sons to come back home, mm. to raise a generation who will be like Jesus, who will obey and fulfill God's calling over their lives. Okay. Awesome. Francis. Uh, in, in the mic, uh, just or you want to become? <clears throat> yeah, okay. What, what did you write? What did you start off with? <clears throat> My vision is I want to become a oh that's where it is. <clears throat> it's about becoming. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Nina is it? Mm -hmm. I I written like I want to worship the Lord, mm. to know His word, and to help others to grow in the law. Mm. Worship, know His word, and to grow. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, anyone online? Also, you can post it. You can just put it. Uh, see, rather, what is it? Empty page. <clears throat> No, it's it's hidden, huh? That's it. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, anyone online? You want? You'd like to? Would you like to share what you would written down? Uh, Anand, you want to share? <laughs> <laughs> now, what have you written down, Anand? Okay, thinking about it. Okay. So you see, um, it's good to it's good to think knowing like. Think, uh, knowing that, see, these are the attributes of the vision. Okay, this is what a vision can do: give clarity, give direction, so that our life is not, you know, we don't s spend too much time in detours and and wasting it. So it's not just uh, you know we writing it from the top of our heads, but we are just asking God, God, you, you know, you put things in my heart, and so you know, uh, it needn't be a very dramatic thing. You know, just like how we share the word, you know, prophetic word, how God speaks to us, the word of knowledge. And it comes into our heart in a very simple way, right? In a very simple manner. And then we just capture it and we put it, right? And uh, maybe we can spend time, you know, refining it to include, you know, all the, maybe we just thought of one thing, right? Maybe we're just thinking of just one thing. How can we put it together? Right. Like, for example, Vision at All People's Church can be like, okay, we want to have five churches. We want to, uh, you know, reach people, etc. But when you say to be salt and light, right, it's, it goes beyond planting churches. Yes or no? Yeah. yeah. So it, it means that um, it includes people who are not called to be church planters also. It includes people, it includes working professionals, it could include sports people, uh, it includes politicians, it could, in, you know, it's an all encompassing word to be, you know, then this is what Lord, Lord has called. So, uh, called us to be, to be influencers and people of impact, right, so, as a church. And we know that church is not just, um, you know, not just an organization, but it's the body, it's people. So, we are in that vision, we are actually drawing and we're saying okay this is who you can be like to be part of the vision this is who we can be 
you know, to be salt and light, uh, influencers, people who impact, and so on. A voice to the nation. So when you think of a voice to the nation, what picture does that bring? <clears throat> I can think of a big political rally, you know, a lot of people, and then, uh, yeah, then, you know, there's some old, old-fashioned mic, which is there, and then, you know, uh, somebody is addressing the nation, right? A voice to the nation. But so, when you say a voice, you know, it's a, it's a voice that can bring truth. It's a voice that can, you know, um, kind of encourage people to action. It's a voice that can bring hope. It's a voice that can say, okay, you can change your destiny. You can change your destiny. You're heading, you know, it's, a, it's heading towards a destiny of maybe destruction, but that can be changed, right? So it's a voice of truth, a voice of hope to the nation and to the nations, right? So it's not just this nation, but it's to the nation. So it, it's, a, it's got a global thing. So it starts with the city, goes to the nation, and goes to the nations right the entire world so so something like that right so our vision can be big because god dreams big so right now we just wrote down okay what do you want to be so but then it can it can be a global impact in kind of vision right for us personally also right okay uh jackin says my god given vision uh, is to pray encourage counsel young women whom god places in my life um in my life, family, and ministry, to come and live in the place where God wants each of us to be. Whatever God has taught me, I want to share with them and bless. Yeah, right. Thank you, Jackin. Yeah, that's that's good. Right to pray, encourage, counsel. Right. Okay. So, uh, so just work on it. Okay, just think about it, pray, work on it, and then you'll realize that hey, this is what God has called me to do. You know, it's it's there all along. Uh, it's been burning all along. I didn't. I didn't give voice to it. I didn't put it in words. Right? The minute you see it on paper, you see it on your screen. You, you know, then it becomes a little more clearer. Okay. Okay. So uh, today, in the, during the mentoring session, we're just going to the fourth thing, just to communicate the vision. Right. So we saw that, um, you know, in that whole cycle that uh, of vision to ex execution, we saw that okay, there there comes a time when we communicate or share that uh, vision okay now uh, communication of that vision is uh, is important because um, for the people who are part of the vision right maybe you, you can you're thinking of your family you're thinking of your church you're thinking of an organization maybe or a, or as a leader uh, the people whom you have influence over or whom God has given you or placed you to give oversight like it could be a simple, you know, leading a Bible study, whatever. Right? But that vision has to be communicated. What does that mean to communicate a vision? To to share, right? not just speak. To share, right? to communicate. It can be in various ways, right? Written, verbal, pictures. Right. So vision needs to be communicated. So uh, so which means that people who are part of the vision. First of all, should know the vision. Okay, uh, it's very important. Know the vision because I I need to be instructed. I need to know, you know, okay, this is what the vision is of this church, of this ministry, of this organization, of this team, right? Uh, for example, when somebody joins the like worship team, right? We audition, maybe audition them for skills, abilities, gifting, everything, and then we screen them for. A testimony and call and so on. So somebody joins the worship team at the end of it. Uh, we share the vision, or even before they, you know, join, we share the vision. Hey, this is the vision of the worship ministry. Okay. Uh, the vision of the worship ministry is to that we will encounter God's manifest presence in worship. That we will lead people, you know. To encounter the same. First of all, that we would personally encounter God's manifest presence in worship. That we would delight God's hearts, God's heart in worship. That's how it starts. That we would delight God's heart in worship, encountering His manifest presence, and to lead others in the same, establishing them in the same. So, it's very clear. 
it's a three line it's very clear okay so so everyone who joins the team who's part of the team we just make sure we communicate it over and over and over again that they should know the vision right so this is what we are doing so what happens is that um you know when people know the vision then they understand why we are doing this why are we gathering together why are we leading worship like for example you know, let's take this example of worship you know like some people can say can have this understanding that okay i am here to lead you in worship okay i am part of the worship team worship team leads in worship but i am here to lead you in worship that's the vision why am i here i'm going to lead you so i'm going to instruct you i'm going to tell you how you need to do i'm going to tell you to lift your hands i'm going to tell you to sing louder i'm going to tell you to open your mouth. i'm going to always be telling you because i'm leading you in worship okay but if the vision in in the vision of the worship team it is that that you you know the vision of worship ministry is that we personally individually would delight god's heart in worship that's the first thing that we would encounter his manifest presence that's the second thing the third thing is that then we would establish others in it that we would lead others in it so first of all so the importance is on i me myself personally worshiping encountering god in worship that i am a worshiper first of all i'm not here to just tell you okay what to do that comes that's an overflow of me worshiping right that's just an encouragement for others to you know just invite others to worship so vision is very you know so it changes the very you know where the worship ministry is heading right it changes completely it changes the heart of the people saying hey i need to encounter god i need to pursue god uh, forget about others you know i need to do this personally so everyone the church and ministry should know it okay so um so it means we need to as leaders we need to communicate the vision share the vision okay so everyone knows the vision secondly everyone owns the vision what does that mean become a part of it it's mine so it's it's no longer you know i, I i'm not no longer saying things like okay uh, this is what that person said you know our worship pastor shared this that this is the vision you know our worship pastor shared that no no this is the vision of our worship ministry so everybody owns it takes ownership of it right it becomes theirs hey this is i'm part of this and this is my vision too right um owns the vision yeah sorry yeah i want to use the mic um yeah. um when we're speaking about the vision um so like it's a, we have to express and we have to explain so it's 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 like personally our vision right like why we are sharing like uh, why we are just asking as a congregation or a pastor or team to follow is that um so anand's question is okay so if it's a personal vision why do you want to share now that's a that's a different thing so if god has you know called you specifically to do certain things then you don't have to but then if god has called you to let's say um, you know for a church planting kind of a ministry then obviously there are others who are part of it so whoever is part of it needs to know the vision who was with you saying okay i'm with you uh, in this and i'm pursuing god along with you so that you know to help or to you know i'm with you in this i want to achieve or right, we want to uh, reach the objective along with you so when people do that then it's important that we share the vision so that's the thing so it's a collective vision it becomes applicable to the entire church entire body if 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 we take pastor if we take apc only okay before the pastoral team form and all i mean maybe you 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 pastor all the other pastors would have leading in us in a different way or or somewhere you you are in other ministries or in some worship okay. camps or else. okay after you are coming here only so how it will work like we have to obey to our uh, uh, i mean senior pastor after you came here you got to know 
like so i i i have to agree for this hmm. or else if if you or some other associate pastor if you have a separate calling individual calling in between right. that you got to realize that this is not my thing yeah, yeah. so how it will actually work like if we also have to lead in the future so how we have to tell to our uh, assistant pastor or associate okay. pastor yeah so if, if there is a differing vision that's what you're saying right if there's an individual uh, calling individual you know differing vision at some point in life you know it could be right in the beginning okay so so why are we drawn to a particular you know let's say uh, a vision you know because god has put the same desire in you and you want to see the same thing happen right you 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 get to know about the people the who are pursuing god for a particular purpose and then you also you know it resonates with you you know there is something you agree with it you know and then that's why you want to do the same thing and that's why you become part of the vision in whatever capacity you know maybe as a as a person as a believer you know as a as someone who wants to serve in a small way as someone who you know god's raising you up to serve and contribute in a in a bigger capacity whatever you know but that is what draws you which means that there's something in god has put in you which is the same as what they are also perceiving okay that is why you are drawn so it's important that right in the beginning itself that the vision is stated hey this is the journey we are on this is where we are going you know as a church so if there's any difference you know i could be part i could be part of it but not maybe in you know a part of the leadership you know not maybe in you know like because i can be part of the of the church of the body because you know i you know i i i, I like that vision and this is something that but but then maybe god has put something else in me you know to pursue so i will attend church maybe but then i will not go beyond that because i have got a certain other thing to pursue god has called me so all my time energy resources i'm going to i'm going to receive from here you know whatever god is speaking or is sharing you know and so i'm going to be built up spiritually etc all that aspect i'm receiving but then this is what god has called me to do and uh, told me to be and so i'm pursuing that i may not necessarily be part of the leadership or you know part of the vision in that in that sense so that's that's it that's one scenario second scenario is okay i'm serving i'm part of the vision i'm serving and i'm you know doing everything faithfully and then i then i sense that at some point that god has put you know the desire that, uh, and the and the vision that god has put in me is god also adds right so it's taking me in a different direction right so much so that okay i'm not able to allot the time and energy and and the resources that i used to uh, it's a it's a different season and then god is calling me for something else uh, and that is growing right there's nothing wrong in communicating and sharing and saying hey, this is god is calling me to this so you know to to go with the blessing to be commissioned for that and that has also happened it's like uh, everyone wanted to be a leader maybe if it is not in the starting but in middle everyone will learn and and everyone will have this desire like i also wanted to be a leader Hmm. so it happened in a, in our ministry also when when my dad was doing also so the there were people who went away so how how we have to take that because if when we are learning this christian leadership we have to know all these things right, right. like when when yeah. when it comes to apc also how it works yeah. like last time also when pastor ravi went like sorry when but pastor ravi uh, ah yeah 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 hmm. how how we perceive it Sorry. and how we have to see yeah, yeah so so what is the motive for taking up leadership you know that's a big thing right what is your motive uh for you know taking up any position taking up any uh, you know place of leadership that's something that you need to ask i mean yourself and uh, that needs to be clear it needs to be pure it needs to serve it needs to you know it's not or a position of power influence or influence any of those things so the so motive is clear so if that is the case you know we when we raise up leaders we we release the leaders into their whatever they want to whatever they are called to do right and that will not be in conflict with the vision or purpose 
of the of the church right so when we release them and say okay you know go for it pursue it with the encouragement and say so it it it'll be in a nice way when you release the leaders in, in such way maybe they call to plant a church very very much similar like you know this church but then it's a you know maybe it's an urban ministry uh, maybe it's whatever it could be right uh, but whatever the you know dna is there in them spiritual dna whatever they received and saying maybe god has called them you know so so the thing is for the leaders to have that open communication uh, with one another say this is this is what god you know i'm not hiding anything uh, you know i'm not doing anything behind your back and suddenly one day you know one half of <laughs> so you know half of the congregation is no, I'm not doing anything like that because god has called me uh, in purity and do things in righteousness um, and in the right way so you know you you share openly you know this is what i feel god is calling god is saying maybe you know if if it's the same thing it can be another location the sixth location <laughs> right so or if it's a completely different thing where the church you know uh, it, it's uh, it's not really part of this this particular vision uh, you you go and, and the thing is this you know you're ultimately you're in the kingdom of god right um sowing watering reaping you know ultimately in the kingdom of god we are co-workers with god so when we have that kingdom mindset then we will praise the leaders but we will also release the leaders at the right time we will not hold them back and say okay hey, you need to be here you need to be in this level only uh, you can't rise above you won't do that yeah yeah like the vision uh, that we have or like uh, the burden of a vision mm -hmm. uh, it's not uh, most of the times it cannot be like personal but it's to collaborate with someone or join our hands with someone is it like that like i mean if it's um, you know it, it it depends on the is it depends on the nature of the vision if it's uh, if it's something that's going to be uh, the sphere of the influence of carrying out that vision it's going to be it's going to be big right then most likely yeah you told like uh, like even the, your vision like what you want to do mm. matches with apc mm -hmm. so you join and you're working like yeah. you're doing your so more it can be like that also vision cannot be sometimes personal for myself but also like you know to join hands like with someone whose vision like yeah it resonates with, yeah your this thing resonates with them and it's to go and be with them and yeah, join with them yeah, but yeah. not like personally pursue right it can be like it that. can be that true yeah 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 okay so um so we'll we'll stop here yeah and then we'll continue next class thank you yes